so Jenna, you've, you wanted to share your story um, with people. And so I just wanted to take this time and just kind of ask a couple questions to see what your life was like before Christ, how you kind of got to know him and what life is like now. Is that okay? Yeah. Awesome. All right. So just, just the first thing that's on my mind that I'd love to hear more about is um, before Christ, how did, how did you think? Honestly, I felt like my thoughts weren't my own. Like I was on autopilot and I was just watching my life from down below. Like I couldn't control my emotions. I couldn't control the way I acted, what I said. It was almost like someone was just in control of me. Like it was somebody else's life and I was just watching. I was extremely suicidal. Uh, I, I didn't have any hope for the future. I didn't see the point in living anymore. And it got to the point where I was just living for other people, not for myself and definitely not for God. So with your like thoughts being in such a such a dark place, how did that affect your actions? I felt so numb, like empty. I started hanging out with these people that weren't very good for me. Um, I started drinking and smoking and just um, drugs every day. Um, it got to the point where there wasn't one day where I was sober. Um, I constantly needed some sort of substance to distract me from myself. It was just sin after sin after sin. I just lost myself in it. I looked in the mirror and I, I didn't know who I was anymore. When you're, when you're living like that, uh, when you're stuck in the, the, the dark part, right, the gloomy, life didn't have a point, well, how did you, how'd you cope? I don't think I did cope then. Yeah. I just kept drinking and got more high and kept isolating myself and kept hanging out with the wrong crowd. I didn't cope about anything, so I didn't really get over anything. And so it was just one bad thing after another after another. So that's where you were, right? The dark, the gloomy. Um, what was the turning point? How, how do we get where we are now, today? I was living in a pretty bad situation and I moved with you and your wife uh, to Maryville to go to school. Um, it still wasn't good. I took myself completely out of everyone I knew. Um, I came to Maryville and not only did I not know anybody, but there was no way for me to get high, get drunk, um, all that stuff. And I just, I took myself out of all of that. I started praying and I didn't really know what I was praying for. Cause like I always believed in God. I just, I didn't know it could be so intimate that like Everything about him and us is so intimate. Like there's such a personal relationship and I didn't know that existed. And I started praying and I I told him that I was I was so ready to go and I didn't want to be here anymore. And I just I was like, just give me a sign, like one sign, like some some sort of hope. It was like the next day I woke up and I just like I felt different. It got to the point like when I was happy, um, they called, like my doctors, they called that like manic episodes where like you like have really bad lows and then you go get high. Um, so I really didn't like think a lot about it. I was like, oh yeah, probably just manic episode, nothing to worry about. Like the happiness will go away like it always does, you know? And it just didn't go away. I remember like I was sober and I felt okay. Like I didn't feel sad. And that was really weird. Like being sober and not and just being okay, being content with life. I could feel, like feel his presence with me. Like I, I, I could feel that I wasn't alone, that he was with me. And like the fir very first time I felt his presence, I was walking across the street. You know that feeling you get when like someone's like walking behind you? I like turned around and there was no one there. It was just like this, like so much love and mercy. And it was like a wave. And it, I don't know how to explain it, it was just, it was the most beautiful emotion I've ever felt. It was like just pure love and mercy and grace. And I, I knew it was Him. And I just kept praying and I kept submitting my mind and my heart and everything to Him. Um, I gave Him my addiction. I, I gave Him everything and He hasn't let me down. 
I felt alive, like I could breathe again, and like, like my life had just begun. You talked about a lot of like, um, in the old mindset, the things you took, you brought in, like you brought in the drugs, the alcohol, medications, even the people you're around, um, and then you cut those out. So what is now like, what have you put in place of that? Um, so, started going to church here, uh, going to church every Sunday. I uh, did join the young adult small group, which helped me a lot. Um, everybody there was like super like open. I really got to see like what your friends and what your community is supposed to look like. All I let myself know was the sin and I didn't let myself see his grace. Um, this isn't on, even, I didn't give you this question, but I think it'd be really important. If you had one thing to share with someone who's struggling with anxiety, suffering with depression, um, any mental illness, what, what's one thing you would want them to know? When I was in my darkest path and all I heard were those voices just screaming at me, just end it all. You can stop it right now, just take your life. Like, it's so easy. And there's just this very quiet voice. It was like, there's, there's so much more, you know? Every mistake that, and I love this about God, is every mistake that you do, He's gonna change that and make it something spectacular. He's going to take like your greatest sin and He's gonna use it to help other people. And it's amazing.